So as I wrote my book, Age of Context, I, I met with dozens or really hundreds of businesses, and I learned that there's two drivers on businesses. One, they need to know m more about everything. <laughs> you know, if you're a grocery store, you need to know of, about the wait times in your lines. And you need to know uh, more about your customers. And that means that you, you're being asked to do more with databases. And I'm getting around and seeing all the new database companies for exactly that reason. Today we have Clustrix, who's a, a SQL uh, a, a variant, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to hear more about what makes them different and why, why uh, businesses should bet on Clustrix right now. I'm Robin Perrohead. I'm CEO and President of Clustrix. And uh, where I come from, I've been 25 plus years in the technology business, started as a hardcore geek, then became a marketing guy, and then general manager at a big chunk of HP software business. And I started to get my hands dirty again and run a startup a couple of years ago. Yeah. So you're a, you're a SQL compatible database, yeah. but you're not MySQL. You're, you're, you're yeah. something new, right? We are all our own technology built from the ground up. And our great founders basically decided to reinvent the relational database for the era of the cloud. And so the problem we focused on is hyperscale transactional applications where you want to run more and more real-time analytics queries on that same database using the language that you're comfortable with, which is SQL, yeah. that everybody in the universe knows. Yeah. Tell me how the market's playing out right now. Because you know, in SQL, there's MySQL for, or SQL Server from Microsoft. There's, or, there's Oracle SQL databases. Uh, and then there's all of the MySQL stuff and the, all the variants therein. That's right. Why? And then there's all the new NoSQL, right? The new That's stuff. Right. <laughs> yeah, there's more so, terms every day, in fact. Right. <laughs> and there seems like, yeah. during, while I was writing my book, it, it seemed like every three weeks a new company would sh show yeah. me another new database, a graph database or That's something. That's right. Yeah. So uh, w why choose you guys versus all the other choices out there for databases? Yeah, well, I think it's, it is complicated right now. I think the thing that we observe is there's a major transition going on in the industry from the scale-up databases like Microsoft, Oracle, IBM, et cetera. They're all optimized for the old SMP scale-up compute architectures, yeah. which did a really good job, by the way, for back office applications where data and workloads were pretty darn predictable, right? Yeah. The new generation of databases are all scale out, and they're dealing with larger volumes, faster moving streams of data. Scale out means you can buy more machines and it just gets faster and faster. That's right. You don't bulk up your one big machine. That's right, so databases that are built for the cloud, plug and play commodity compute that gets faster as you add more compute and storage power. So that's what the new generation is about, and we believe there's this massive sea change going on. Now there's generally three categories of those new things. No SQL, which is about very simple access, read and write to unstructured data. So Mongo, Cassandra, for example. Yep. There's the Hadoop family of products, which is basically about very large scale analytics, really batch analytics. And then we fit in what the industry calls new SQL, which is really about next generation relational database for that kind of OLTP, olap -y kind of workload that sits where all your real most important business data sits. Yeah. And that, there's a lot of workloads. That's probably not a startup, right? That's probably right. a bank or a retail store or, or a chain, I mean, or something like that, right? Well, it's actually e-commerce is a great segment. So you think of yeah. the e-commerce application. Uh, we have a great customer called No More Rack, one of the fastest growing U.S. e-commerce companies. And they use all three of these technologies, right? So you can use NoSQL for quickly presenting product information and pictures on the website. Yep. Um, they use Hadoop to analyze things over time, but they use us as the core engine for all their payments, customer transactions, and tracking what the customer is doing minute by minute so they can better monitor <coughs> them while they're on the Sorry. site. Yeah. That's uh, cool. In the data centers, these things are, uh, the, the servers themselves are going to SSD. Right. Do you take advantage of any of the new, because you don't need right. to write things on a spinning media anymore, Absolutely. right? And, we, yeah. and so we're seeing new kinds of in-memory databases that are really fast. Right. Are, are you playing in that space at all? Or? Absolutely. We always recommend for our, our solution set that people use flash storage, you know, flash SSD. Yeah. And in particular, we allow people to use basic flash drives versus very expensive flash arrays, because all the data protection, data layout, and optimization we do in software. Ah. So we get really good price performance. And we think that's a smarter way of thinking about using memory for databases. Any terabyte size or bigger database 
can get very expensive in using pure RAM versus a smart mix of RAM and SSD. Yeah. So I think you want to be smart about the applications of your technologies just versus just pure in memory. Yeah. How SQL compliant are you? If I'm a MySQL yeah. uh, developer right now, do I need to relearn anything? Yeah, so good news if you know standard SQL 92, you can use Clusterx out of the box. And we've done a lot of work to be basically 99% plug compatible with MySQL and build a superset around that. So if you know MySQL or NC92, learning Clusterx is a snap. Yeah. And does it work on cloud instances? You know, if I have Amazon or Rackspace cloud instances, can I, can I put Clusterx on that? Yeah, so we have a software freemium model. You can download and deploy in the Amazon solution, Rackspace, your own virtualized or bare metal instances, wherever you want. And quite frankly, you see customers changing their mind a lot in the evaluation cycle. You might start on Amazon like no more Rack did, but then they're overwhelmed with demand. Yeah. And they want to upgrade their database to something that's a more hosted, dedicated environment, something like a Rackspace. Yeah. Is it programmatic? Uh, it, it, in other words, if the database uh, starts getting performance problems or uh, it, it's starting to fill up, yeah. does it open up more instances or, or uh, ask for more resources? Yeah, we're dynamically expandable. In fact, if you show this video here, it kind of goes you a little, walks a little bit through kind of the fundamental operation. So if you play the first video for us. Yeah, rock. So just show you, you know, what we try to do is we, we automatically distribute and slice up all the pieces of data distribute it across a cluster, and then if you need more capacity, you just spin up a new instance, and we automatically redistribute on the available instances. And so you're doing the sharding for me. Yeah, well actually, it's not, not even sharding. It's we not. We slice it up into little tiny data fragments, okay. rather than separating out the tables into shards. So you, it all looks like one parallel database that gets bigger and bigger as you need more capacity. Oh, very cool. And honestly, we haven't found the limit on our, on our linear scalability we have one customer that's now running a cluster with you know, dozens of nodes of 240 core processors, and they've got linear performance from you know, a few cores up to these hundreds of cores. Wow. Yeah. Now what's really cool about it, you show the next video, that what our real advantage is, is so we can solve that scalable OLTP problem, but what most customers like e-commerce companies want to do is to understand what is the customer doing right now with everything I know about them in real time. So being able to take the best that we've learned from MPP data warehousing technology, and write really smart plans, is what they're called, to run complex analytic operations that live data is our unique value proposition. And so what kinds of workloads does that work for? What kinds of com companies? So e-commerce, as we talked about, yeah. ad tech, or in particular ad brokerages. So ah. think about an ad brokerage. They have to do billions of impressions a day in milliseconds or less. That's transactional. Yeah. But they also have smart algorithms trying to figure out the optimal way to use their ad money or their client's money to get the best yield on their ad. Okay. And that's a very complex set of operations as running on really real-time data. So ad exchanges are a perfect fit for us. Yeah. So those are the two classic applications for us. I, I assume you have an enterprise price, so you're probably yeah. at hundreds of thousands of dollars, that kind of thing? No, actually, we, <laughs> we're, we're a new breed, we're a startup, so we're disruptive, right? <laughs> so we have a subscription pricing model, yeah. and it starts at $1,200 per quarter okay. per year. So it actually looks a lot like an open source enterprise price. And is um, there a, a way to try it for free before the, yeah. you commit to that? So two ways, if you're a developer, we have a community edition free forever with community support that's limited to a certain number of cores. And then uh, we have a trial. So you can download and use this a trial with bigger clusters you want to spin up wherever you want uh, for 45 days longer if you really need the time. And we'll yeah. help you through the evaluation. What, what would a CTO be asking? I, you know, I don't know. Would they ask, is this ACID compliant or something? But I, yeah. since it's very SQL-like, it's probably... Well, yeah, CTO, well, CTOs really want to know what's unique about the analytics capability. Because yeah. there's lots of ways that people have figured how to solve the transaction problem. So unless they're a really extreme situation, they really get more interested in how can I really do this analytics you know, or my complex queries on the live data. Because the promise is great, right? No ETL, don't have to run a separate data warehouse unless I really have to, yeah. save a ton of money and complexity, but nobody else has done it before. Yeah. So the most complex questions we get are on what kinds of queries, what kind of operations, what benchmarks do you have? What's the size of configuration, depending on what I'm trying to do? So really the best thing to do is uh, get them to play with the technology, because yeah. every workload is a little bit different. Yeah. And so the best way to figure that out is to try it. Yeah. Um, is this appropriate for the, the kinds of uh, workloads, like, let's say, could Twitter bet on you? Yes. Because you know, 
they're getting half a billion tweets a day right now. If you were starting Twitter again today, you should use ClusterX. That's all you need to know, because <laughs> it's, it's exactly why, the problem. Why not solved. do one of the NoSQL databases? But why, why bet that kind of workload on a Well, on a think what Twitter's trying to do now. In the early I get days, why you put an e-commerce store you know, that is yeah. very relational with addresses and customers and all that, right? Think about the transition that Twitter and now all these other new web communication platforms are trying to make. They're going from user base to monetization. Yeah. Once you monetize, you try to understand patterns of usage, who's saying what to whom, and display advertise, advertisement that is very specific to that person. Yeah. So now you're getting into analytics. Now you're getting into stuff that really matters about connecting the dots, so it's more relational. So that's why I think anybody who's starting any sort of Twitter application today should probably start with us the, from the beginning rather than going down the other path and switching over later. Yeah, no, that, that makes sense. Um, tell me about the company, how, how is it funded and how many people work there? And yeah, so founding investors are Sequoia Capital and USVP. They have a lot of money now. They do have a lot of money, <laughs> yes. They just, yes, yes. WhatsApp just, <laughs> they invested in WhatsApp and they just got 16, uh, somewhere around yeah, 16 it's a, billion. Yeah, it's a great day for the Sequoia Fund. They wish them well. <laughs> they invested in Rackspace too. Yeah. So it's good and company. we brought in some new investment partners last year led by High Bar Capital. Very cool. High Bar Partners. And um, so we're well funded, you know, we have cash in the bank. Our focus right now is scaling up the awareness of the distribution of our software yeah. on, with multiple cloud providers that we're working with. Yeah, that's yeah. why you're here. Yeah. That's why we're here. And we're based in San Francisco, right around the corner from here. We have roughly 50, 55 people uh, hiring. So if anybody's out there that wants to join the company. Who are you, who are you finding hard to hire <laughs> you know, in San Francisco? Smart engineers that know how to do analytics are really yeah. hard to find, and they're in very high demand. Yeah. So we're looking for those. They're looking for great uh, inside salespeople as well. Yeah. Well, cool. Where do we learn more about it? www.clusterx.com. Very cool. Thank Perfect. you very much. Good seeing you, Robert. <laughs>